of Max Margarita than Paradise. Today, I am fortunate enough to have a friend of mine, Dorn, uh, from Canada, and he's here to share his life experience on Everybody Has a Story. Dorn, why don't you uh, start out by introducing yourself and sure. giving a little bit of background information. Uh, well, I'll try to keep it brief, which is not a skill of mine. Uh, <clears throat> they say brevity is the soul of wit, uh, which means I don't have much. Uh, <clears throat> at any rate, uh, from Canada, from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, um, paid my snow dues there and in other climbs. Uh, been to five colleges, graduated from none. Don't have much use for an education system as it, as it happens to be, or at least where I was. Many of these things, uh, if anybody's curious in the future, uh, are going to be expounded upon because about four months ago, my life changed big time. And I'm writing a book, a new book, another book. My others have been uh, bridge books, not exactly what this one is for sure. Um, <clears throat> but uh, they've been favorable. They don't make money. <laughs> and as far as Thailand is concerned, uh, you don't have to scrape snow off your windshield here. But a good friend of mine, who is also a writer, published a few books, also from Saskatoon, uh, Jason Schoonover by name, has been coming to Thailand for, gosh, I'm not sure exactly, 35 years or so, uh, mostly scuba diving near Phuket and that sort of thing, but uh, has been telling me that time, whisk, get your ass over here. And uh, about 13 years ago, I was lounging on uh, Maui with another friend, and he had a few weeks with no work, and... Uh, he said, well, why don't we go to Thailand? Well, Jason had been trying to get me there forever. And I said, why don't we? So he said, you make the arrangements. I'm too lazy. So I did. Uh, I heavily did my due diligence. And any of you who are planning on coming over here, I advise you to do the same. Bearing in mind that advice is worth or it costs you. This is zip. But your due diligence will pay off later, big time. And if you don't do it, it will get you later, big time. That's all I've got to say about that. Uh, all the details for my writing. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, we came over here for three weeks. I chose between uh, Pattaya, Phuket, Bangkok, and it wasn't hard to make a decision. Um, <clears throat> stayed three weeks at the residence inn on, uh, uh, near downtown, as it were. Could not believe how ignorant and naive I was at the time. Uh, <clears throat> but how much I loved it. And I, of course, love Thai cuisine. So many reasons, um, including the one everybody talks about, got me here. And uh, second time I was here three months, third time six months. And uh, ever since then, I've been alternating six-month periods with Canada um, with the odd every five years, uh, two-year stint here. Currently, I'm on longer than two years and working on becoming a uh, non-resident Canadian, so which has negative tax ramifications. But since I make so little money, I don't give a damn. Uh, <clears throat> um, I love it. This is where uh, I have, for some years, hoped and expected to expire, finally. Um, four months ago, I was living in uh, a dream condo for me that I could never replicate and lost it. And uh, the four months since then uh, are pretty unbelievable, pretty unbelievable and still happening. Uh, and I've decided to uh, make that part of a book that I'm doing. Uh, the book is of general interest and is going to cover a lot of different things that I won't get into here. But uh, in time, various uh, publicity machines like Instagram, X now, uh, will start making notes. So that's just the basic preliminary work now. I no longer live in Padia. I live in Koh Chang, uh, an island south of here near the Cambodian border. I love it. It's uh, quiet. It's peaceful. A lot of people I know around here wouldn't go there on a bet. Uh, I say, fine. The more you stay there, the more I enjoy here. So uh, <clears throat> that's where I am now. I just moved into a new place one day before I came here to renew my visa, which was three days ago, and uh, have hardly got settled. But I'll tell you this, I'm, I'm in a bungalow, and the sea is 30 meters that way, 
for my front door out for grass, and I'm paying the equivalent of about 700 Canadian a month. Now that doesn't, you know, perk you up. Um, there are a lot of other things that will. Cuisine, of course, I love here. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of Thai cuisine, I have an autographed picture of Tony Trabert back when I was about this high that says to the hamburger kid, Michael, might be my first name, uh, you want to live it up. Well, about a year and a half ago, I weighed 103 kilos. Now I weigh 73. So 30 kilos, it's a bit. Um, almost 70 pounds. And the losing the weight was easy. It was healthy. I had a doctor watch it. All I did was quit eating bread, basically. No burgers, no bread, no falang food, more Thai food. I had oatmeal every morning, and bless me, I feel really good about that. You can do it. Don't buy into all those fad di diets. Just make common sense with it. Now, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm here 13 years ago uh, with uh, my friend there. We, we came here. I spent two years in Jom Tien uh, for a couple of reasons I, I didn't like it much. Um, mainly because Russian guys tend to have vodka for breakfast, and by noon they're ready to fight. So <laughs> I moved to uh, Naklua, up in the northern part of them, and I lucked into a condo that I've been in for 11 years. Uh, I met a nice fellow here uh, some years back. His name's Andy. Uh, he moved out of here, and he opened a really nice restaurant bar that caters to, uh, well, both Thai and, and Falang. Spelled Farang, pronounced Falang, uh, which is non-foreigners to the T or foreigners to the to the Thais. Um, yeah, it's uh, I love I love where I lived. Uh, Tom may have some uh, questions about this and that, but my life is in a big sort of transition right now. I'm uh, I'm going to be eighty this year shortly, and uh, I'm beginning what I call the last stage of life what I call an octo life, and that is part of the title of the book. So we'll see what happens. Um, I've, uh, I'm writing this for a couple of reasons, a couple of purposes. Maybe we'll get into that later in discussion, Tom, I don't know. All right. Have at it. All right, well, that was really great. Uh, prior to moving to Thailand, where were you permanently? Ah, uh, okay, um, that's, I, um, I spent, most of my adult life playing professional bridge. Okay. Uh, cards, two, right? Card, cards, card yeah. yeah. Yeah, along with uh, chess and uh, goal. Okay. Uh, those are the only three games uh, known to humans that you can learn how to play in 10 minutes, start having fun in 10 minutes, and take a lifetime of study and never master. All right. Uh, and wonderful. And uh, I've been playing professionally, not very much at tournaments because I can't stand hotel living. Uh, I've been teaching recently. I mean, in the recent years, a bit online. COVID screwed up everybody with everything. Uh, but I taught in the uh, winters in the California desert um, to uh, the country club set. And, uh, you know, got around. I've, I've also I've been doing some writing. Uh, you know, back in the day, I had uh, some uh, play produced uh, and that sort of thing. But, you know, hobby is music. Okay, yeah. a great singer. He says oh. he isn't, but he's a good karaoke <laughs> singer. I've, I've got a friend here who hates karaoke, so of course I'm learning. So uh, we can get him in a corner. <laughs> they do good. They do good. And he was a regular here at one point, but we don't, being in Ko Chong, we don't see him as much. So yeah, it's, a good, it's a good change of pace. It really is. I'll yeah. get into the talking about the social scene here. Right, right. Initially, when you came to Thailand and you had a choice between Phuket, Koh Samui, Wai yeah. Han, uh, Koh Chang, or even Koh Arm, and that, but you picked Patia to originally stay. Yeah. Uh, do you have any reasons why? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. sure. Uh, not Phuket, simply because it was so expensive, and my friend Jason had informed me of some things about it. All right. Uh, so that was just out, and so was Bangkok, because uh, I hate pollution. And other things, but uh, the other choices uh, weren't much considering the time we were coming for. Um, Body had a bridge club, and of course, uh, the uh, infamous sex scene is, uh, you know, prominent here if, if you want it to be, and not if you want it to be. So, um, those are the reasons. We were only here for three weeks, we were here to party. Sure. You know. Yeah. 
I'm doing a video right now about the title of it is I didn't come here to sleep. Uh, Good title. But <laughs> so you've lived here in Thailand for the better part of 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. That, that's a testament on what you think of Thailand in general, you know, because you have a choice to live anywhere in the world. Yeah. You know? uh, well, yes and no. Money bears an issue. So, uh, oh, sure, sure. You know, Thailand, Mexico. Right. You know. So do you miss Canada? You know, you know not really. Right. Um, actually, not at all. I miss some people. Yeah. I, I miss I people it. I care I about. It. Nothing else. Sure. Yeah, I get it. Well, I, I, God, I think more. I take that back. I miss some of those Saskatchewan sunsets, man. Yeah. Some middle-aged lady in a contest won it, giving you know a phrase for the license plate on the right. <laughs> right. The land of living skies, man. Yep. I miss that. Yeah. I happen to be a dual citizen. Oh. So uh, I lived in Minneapolis uh, for four years, uh, L.A. area for for a year or so. Uh, my father was born American in the yeah. in the Air Force there, so yeah. yeah, very good, very good. Two passports. Yeah, right, right. So living here in Patio, have you had any hurdles that were hard to cross? I'd say the biggest hurdle for me uh, is uh, learning to respect. Uh, you know, when in Rome, well, when in Thailand. Uh, learning to respect where these people are coming from for some of the behavior they exhibit and uh, some of the ways they look at things which you're not going to agree with, but it's theirs. So uh, uh, when in Thailand, do as the Thailand Thais do, uh, <clears throat> and it's a lot to learn, and there could be big hurdles. Uh, for me, one of the biggest is the representations of corruption that are everywhere. Uh, like it or not, you're going to get your pocket picked one way or the other. <clears throat> Dog or cat? I love animals more than most people. Yeah. I've had both. Um, there's, it, it depends. Uh, I love the dogs at TJ's for years and years. Sure. Uh, Ping Pong was one of my closest friends. Leo is now. And a little, little vodka. But on the other side of the coin, there are two dogs in Cochang that uh, don't like me a bit. Uh, one took a piece out of my foot about five weeks ago, and it's been a very painful and expensive uh, happening. Right, right. It, and uh, that's part of a story. I'm not going to get into it now. And the other one has uh, snapped, but got me twice, but is stupid, so it gets my boot instead of my flesh. Right. So, so uh, I, but I love dogs. And also there's a cat here. And she and I are like best friends already. Yeah, I've been right, here a couple right, days. Right. So, yeah, she sleeps with me. And, yeah. it's, it's interesting you talk about that. I think uh, sometimes I look at dogs and they're a good judge of character. Yes. You know, if, if they're scared of, of you for whatever reason, maybe other people are scared of you. So, it's a good point. You know, think, so living here in Thailand 13 years, uh, how do you get around? Do you, uh, motorbike think? taxi. Motorbike taxi? Yeah, I've got uh, two regular guys. All right. Uh, they're available almost all the time. Sure. Uh, I pay them more than most, but it's cheap. And have you ever owned a car? Oh, or a I've owned a car, sure. And motorbike? No, I don't know how to drive anything other than a bicycle. Uh, okay. okay. So uh, I've, been, uh, I've been threatening to learn how to run a scooter because everybody gets everywhere in Cochang. Sure, sure. My territory there is like a walking area, like right. a oh, few yeah, kilometers. Yeah. So, uh, no, but people have been saying, don't do it. There are so many idiots here that, you know, phalongs, speeding and stuff, and there's only one road there. Right. And, uh, but I see so many other people just putting along like on a scooter like I would probably do. Sure. We'll see. Yeah, I, I want to explore the island more, and I can't do that right. uh, without you, that. So you're limited. Yeah. By not having And certainly all the time I was here in Padilla, anybody that owns a car here, in my opinion, is... Uh, got sawdust in their head uh <clears throat> no but uh, motorbikes despite the fact that they may go the wrong way on a one way and do it on a sidewalk they're the way to get around all right, all right. if somebody's living here as long as you have okay you think somebody needs to have medical insurance while living here uh 
Well, I wish I did. Okay, okay because uh, this foot has cost me 70000 in the last five weeks. That's bot, not bucks. Right, right. And uh, I'm fighting uh, exposed nerves in my shoulder. I took the brace off for this thing. And that's over 40, 45K now. Uh, the last, uh, for health, the last uh, month and a half have been a bit testy, you might say. Right. And yes, have medical insurance. Uh, problem is, uh, when I hit 65, the rates went up. When I hit 70, they went up some more. Now the insurance companies don't even look down their nose. They just go away. So unless you've got money to take care of yourself, beware. Okay. And that's good. Really valid point. Uh, coming over here, I mean, even if you're just traveling here on yep. holiday, you probably yep. should have some type of travel insurance. Yeah, it, of course. And the, the, the medical care here is very good. All right. Uh, I mean, in many places, as good as it is in North America. Same with the dentistry. I've had great experiences here with dentistry at low cost, like Mexico. Um, so those are very good. Those are positives here. And uh, But you should be prepared, for sure. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Ford or Toyota? What are they? <laughs> I kind of figured that was yeah. coming up. How about visas? Are you, are, I assume you're here on a retirement visa? Yeah, one year. Actually, that's why I'm here in Padilla now is to uh, renew it renew that. for another year. Yeah. Is that something that you do yourself or well, do you it's something hire an agent? That, yes and yes. Um, you can do it yourself. Right. Standard 1900 bot, you know, which is like 75 bucks Canadian or something. Uh, not a big deal. You must have an order. There's an over 50 uh, thing, if you are, to, uh, to get this uh, type of visa or an extended right. one. And there are fees involved. Well, they have two little clauses. One of them is you better have insurance. And the other one is uh, you better have a certain sum in the bank. I think it used to be 800K. I think it's right. now a mill or something. I'm no, 800. 800 still. Yeah. There's lots of different options when it comes to getting a visa here in Thailand. But yep. your best bet is just to go talk to an agent, right? Um, that's my best bet. Right. Okay. A due diligence, an intelligent person, they can do it all themselves and avoid a lot of that by preparation. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's it right there. Preparation. Um, Canadian climate, Thailand climate. Did you have any problems adjusting? I don't, I've never adjusted. I still haven't. And right. I don't care to. The only thing I don't like, of course, is the humidity. Oh. You know, all right. And, uh, you know, some days just getting soaked in sweat after you start to step out the door. But I don't have to shovel ice off a windshield. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It's worth it. If somebody's considering moving here or mm -hmm. coming to Thailand, uh, preparing, uh, what kind of preparation uh, would mm -hmm. you advise them to do as far as I, you before know, coming here? Before coming here? Well, just get on the net and Google your ass off. Uh, for whatever is going to be of interest to you, find out the ramifications of that interest in different places here in Thailand. It's all available. Just do right. the work. Yeah. You mentioned that you had lived at one point in Dongkian. Yep. And uh, and then you moved to the North Patty and Nakalo area and that yep. type of stuff. There's lots of options here, whether we, we're living on the ocean yes. or we have a, uh, a building view, <laughs> you know, in yeah. the middle of the city. Yep. How do you come up with the idea of where you want to live? Well, well the best way, I mean, what I would suggest, uh, having done things not so perfectly, and I was just lucky in a lot of respects, sorry. Uh, um, I would suggest booking your first trip over here for a month, having done your due diligence for where you want to investigate, come here for a month and live here. Find out what part of town you like best. Find out this and that, and then way more permanent plans sure, sure. before. Take steps. Take test, stages. Test the waters. As, yeah. Test the water. Test, it, test the water. Yeah. yeah. Right. For sure. Anything you want is right here. Right. Exactly. Anything you yeah, want. It really is. Okay. So when it comes to budgets, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Now, I know that you've seen it all here. Actually. I've seen a lot. I'm okay. sure not all. Yeah, well, you have a lot of experience. There's no doubt about it. Can somebody come here and live on a thousand dollars a month? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. easily. That's doable, right? Easily. You're talking U.S. bucks too. Right, right, yeah. right. Even Canadian, right. sure. Okay. Uh, you won't. You know, you'll be eating a lot of street food. Sure. And you won't be living near the water. Right. 
or very high up in a condo, but you can live here fairly comfortably. Like I paid 500 from 400 to 600 Canadian rent per month for years comfortably. Yeah. Hmm? So if you, if you had a higher budget, let's say $2,500 yeah. Canadian. Okay. Okay. Which is, it'll be a little bit more, I think. Well, if I had 10,000 Canadian, it wouldn't change much of anything. Really? My diet would remain the same. Um, you know, I don't, I just don't have needs uh, of that kind, uh, just for the basics. Uh, extra money to me is uh, a means to an end, and that is to help people. There you go. There you go. Tipping. What do you think about tipping? Well, it's interesting. When I, Before I came here, they said this is a non-tipping country, but right. they're trying to change. Oh, they've done real good on that. <laughs> I, you can't turn around without a handout. Sure. They aren't shy about asking. And uh, they aren't shy about giving you the stink eye if you don't. So um, <laughs> tipping is interesting, but I have some fun with it. Like this morning, um, I went to get some keys duplicated. And uh, I said, how much? And he said, 80 baht. Now, 80 baht is about, uh, gee, three bucks. Right, right. So Canadian. And so I, I, I like to play with their minds. I say, oh, no. You see, they think I'm going to bargain them down. No. It's not much money at all. So I say, oh, no, not 80 baht. I say, is it okay if I give you 100? <laughs> and watch their face change. It's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. But things, there are good values here. Yeah, sure. the, all the values are great in most respects, unless they're importing, obviously. Yeah. You, you want your HP sauce tough, it's going to be expensive. But um, <clears throat> So do you think that this area, or Cochon for that thing, yep. offers uh, adequate means to make new friends? Oh, man. Uh, immense. You're going to meet people. You don't have to go to 19 countries. They're all here. Right. <laughs> you know, I agree. I agree. You know uh, whether it's a bar scene, a music scene, a social scene, a, a club scene, uh, a sports scene, you name it. Right. You're going to meet a lot of good people, you know, from all around the world. You're going to learn a lot of stuff, for sure. And it sounds like the time that you've been here, you've kept busy. Uh, much. Taking part in, like, bridge clubs and... Yeah, I don't do much of that here. Uh, okay. It's... Uh, here, there's uh, the Bridge Club is pretty small time, okay. and uh, I do uh, I do go and play with the uh, the man who manages and runs the club. I right. give him a game once a year, but normally I only play there if a friend of mine is in town who's okay. a good player, sure. and we just want to kill some time. Or on the rare time, uh, a student of mine like comes from India or something, and yeah, says, sure. "Let's go play." Well, anyway, there there are other things I'd oh. like to say. You uh, enjoy singing. Yeah, and, a little uh, bit. going out and nightlife to a certain extent. Um, yeah, to a certain extent. Like I'm not, uh, I don't hang around the Bukau area. And, right. Uh, you know sure. the part, the party scene. I'm even when I was living here, I'd be lucky to be down there maybe two or three times a month. I don't like noise. I don't like loud rock music. Uh, I don't like idiots, and there's a plethora of them drunk <laughs> down there. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I was younger, I didn't tolerate fools gladly. Now I tolerate them not at all. <laughs> So there's definitely more to do here yes. in Patia than anything. the nightlife. Anything. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what time of day. Uh, I know people that just look forward to the mornings and on the golf course. Sure, the sure. golfing around here, there's a dozen world-class courses with an easy range of here. You're a golfer. You'll find this like paradise. Sure. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. I wish I was a better golfer. And don't we all? <laughs> you absolutely love the Thai cuisine. Yeah. Are, are you a cook? No, not at all. Not, a, not at all. A good friend of mine in Canada, she is a gourmet chef. Right. And uh, I'm going to be sending her some of your, uh, some of your videos. She will like them. Right. Uh, but no, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a gourmet. I'm a gourmand, I guess. I like to eat. And, you know, and now that I'm, you know. Me too. <laughs> yeah, but I stay away from the breads. You know, there's so many good things to taste here. The fruits are unbelievable. Any recommendations for Maybe standout restaurants or places yeah. to eat or even the street food? Well, for the street food, I sure do. Um, here in Naklua, right on Soy Fotozarn, um, there's a little lady with a hunchback. She stands about this tall. We call her Mama Fotozarn. She has two sons in their 30s, I guess, who help her out. 
And she runs her street food restaurant from 11 at night until sunrise, right. unless she sells out first. And she really makes some good food. Curries, masamata green, egg soups, uh, all kinds of other dishes, noodle dishes. Yeah, worth, worth it. Uh, I love street food. You don't get sick from street food as a rule. You get sick going to a restaurant where they've kept the food there for two or three more days before they sell it. So right, the right. food, street food is fresh that day. Fish that they've caught are shrimp, uh, squid, plamook, fresh. And uh, when they sell out, they go home. You get good food. Yeah. Cheap. Yeah. So, Norm, what mm. does your typical day look like? <laughs> uh, they're all the same. They're all different. You know, I've, uh, I love my lifestyle insofar as I can do what I want, when I want, how I want. So if I'm tired, I'll go take a nap. You know, it's, uh, if I feel like going out, I'll go out. So uh, there is no typical day except for breakfast. Right. Uh, my breakfast is uh, like Thai Buddha. And uh, I have oatmeal every day, except one. Sometimes I have a four egg. Um, the oatmeal has got nice Thai honey on it. Um, I use 0% milk. I always have about four or five different kinds of fruit of the day. So uh, that's, that's my breakfast. And uh, I'm hypoglycemic, so I eat about five, six times a day, small meals. Uh, that might be my 6 a.m. And then I'll have a 10 a.m. breakfast and a 2 or 3 o'clock. So about every four or five hours, I have something to eat, but it's not huge. Okay. And it's pretty healthy, actually. Do you, uh, do you get up at the same time every no. day? No, not at all. No, and no. Most, at most of it, I'm a night owl. Okay. Which is daytime in Canada, sure. but uh, <laughs> my uh, uh, my bridge students, of course, daytime there. I'm right. working with them mostly at night here, and uh, I I tend to sleep through uh, mornings. Today was an exception. Yeah. There's something you have to fit into the lifestyle here. What they need? Um, no. I, okay, so you don't. Know. So you don't really have a normal routine then. No, my norm my normality is other people's abnormality. <laughs> So you're just right, you're kind of random. Very, you just, you yeah. Just, you do whatever you feel like when you uh -huh. feel like doing it. Exactly. If yeah, I can. Yeah. There are a few things you can't do. Right, right. So do you, do you find it easy to do things while living here? For instance? Or, you know, if um, you want to get up and go swimming, is that a problem? Nope. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had people say, you know what, it is a problem because... Uh, even though I have the ocean right there and I have the pool right there, I just can't pull myself out of bed. Hey, well, inertia is your own problem. I mean, it, this is inertia is the tendency of a body at rest to stay at rest, right. and one in motion to stay in motion. Well, all you have to do is just give me a first little jerk, and you'll keep on going. Right. So it's up to your brain. Yeah. I'm at a stage, the last stage of life, you know, and uh, it's exciting in a way. It's uh, it's yeah. new. I have no major responsibilities other than to myself. Right. That's a nice feeling. Kind of like when you're a kid and you're maybe you're 18 and you set out on your motorbike or something right. for the first time alone. I don't know. It's that feeling of freedom, of wind in your hair. It's beautiful. I wish I had that. Okay. So if you could change, if you had the power to change something about living here in Thailand, mm -hmm. do you have any uh, comments on that? Well, I mentioned that before. I would really wish it. This were not one of the most corrupt places in the world. I mean, it is, corruption is everywhere, including Canada and the United States. But sure. the Thai with the, that and with red tape are particularly adept. What do you think about the Thai culture? About the Thai what? Culture. <laughs> it's fascinating, really. Right. Um, I don't agree with much of it, but it, that doesn't matter. When I see, you know, a Thai family invite me for a meal and they're all eat on the floor. My bones won't do that, you know, they won't. Right, right. But they will go so far out of their way to make me comfortable as right. best they can. Uh, my former girlfriend, as of a few weeks ago, uh, I love her parents and uh, they live in dirt. Yet when I go over there, my, my back can't take sleeping on the bed with her. They take this heavy wooden chair into a room that's kind of like a handmade lounge chair right. and put stuff on it to make me comfortable. It's work. And yeah. they're my age, you know? Sure. 
she's in her forties, but uh, yeah, they, they work hard to be nice. Do, do you speak the Thai language? Yeah. Why not? You know, first year I was here, I went to Thai school. Okay. And all they could teach was dotting the I's and crossing the T's and confusing my brain. Sure. And uh, the hell with that. No, uh, conversational Thai is the way to go, in my opinion. Uh, I did another month in another school that leaned toward that. Right. I've had to learn from the people and I'm doing it. I'm not very good at languages at all. Okay. So, yeah, but, that's fair. So when you say conversational Thai, the hellos, the yeah, goodbyes, that's thank e yous. Yeah. That's easy. But, you know, like a, a freeze like, no problem. Right. Okay. Well, there's a lot. There's five tones in Thai, and there's a hell of a lot of difference in the meaning between um, uh, Mimi Penha and Mimi Penha. Yeah. Big time. And you can make a lot of mistakes, and the Thais are very patient with you, but you can be saying some things that you wish you had not said. Right. Just by your tone. So, do you have family? Um, well, kind of. Um, I mean, I have blood family, not much. Okay. Uh, uh, I have one uh, younger sister. I had another, but she uh, got sick and decided to off herself. So, not really. Mostly, few people by marriage, you know. But sure. uh, I have a son. I haven't seen him in decades. I have an adopted son, haven't seen him in decades. So I would say as far as that type of family is concerned, not much. All right. But I have people in my heart. Sure. Toronto, Saskatoon, Minneapolis. There's some big time. Right. They're my family. Right. I get it. I get it. I got a few from here too. Right. And <laughs> We were kind of talking about that a little bit earlier, and I, I totally get, you know. He might want to. What do you think is one of the best decisions you ever made in your life? Coming here. Really? Yeah, moving to Thailand. Yeah. For sure. I am uh, one of the stupidest smart people I know. <laughs> you know, uh, not listening to Jason decades ago was really stupid of me. Right. And I've kicked my ass ever since. Uh, but there, and there are a lot of other examples. Yeah. Meat or tofu? Uh, you know, tofu assumes the flavor of anything it's melted with. You know? Ah, okay. and, um, it, once in, it used to be all meat. And now I don't think, oh, I can't remember the last time I had a steak. A couple of years. Really? You know, steak and company downtown, they got great meat in Australia, you know, good stuff. Sure. You know, but high prices uh, to import Australian meats. And you don't want to eat a buffalo or pay off one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, not much meat. I prefer tofu, actually, whether it's in soups or anything. What is tofu? <laughs> Bean protein. <laughs> okay, you're right. I, I've been educated on that, but I've asked that question a bunch. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, um, it can go anywhere from, you know, staple to a dessert to, right. a, to an appetite, anything. What other, what other countries have you visited? Oh, I've been absolutely nowhere. I've, okay. uh, I was in Cuba uh, with my parents when I was young, and uh, we got out of town on the second last DC-3 before Castro came in. Wow. I was in the Tropicana the night the lights went out. Wow. Um, I've been to, uh, you know, obviously, you know, Hawaii, touched into Mexico. Uh, have I been anywhere else? Not really. I've had a lot of opportunities to go to yeah. England or there, to go to Europe even. Sure. Turn them all down. We care less. So, I, yeah. Some people just have a drive for new places. International Absolutely. Type stuff. And good, to, good on them is what I say. Right. Uh, in some ways, I envy them. Sure. Uh, but uh, people have asked me about Thailand and how I think about this and that. I said, I've never been to Chiang Mai. I've never been to Chiang Rai. I've never wow, been to wow. I say, I find a place that I like, and I'm there. Yeah. That's my home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy. I can learn on the net. I can see everything I need. So, with that being said, what makes you happy? Interesting. Okay. Um, th these things have changed a little over the years, but what makes me most happy and what people forget, especially uh, a lot of guys that come over here, and a lot of ladies that think that sex is the most important thing to a guy, it's not. It's peace and quiet. That's number one. 
And uh, I appreciate that here big time because the piece you get special. So with that in mind, touching on my other video that I have coming up, we were talking about. Yep. Um, so finding peace and quiet here yep. is doable. It's doable. In Padia, not so much. All right. Okay. Uh, unless you're over on the dark side. There's a few places. But right. um, here on this side of Sukhumvit, um, which is a big north-south sure. highway that divides the city and toward the beach, um, I was in the quietest, most peaceful place in an urban environment I have ever could ever imagine. Uh, how many green belts are there in this city? Well, I can think of one. It's in the middle of it with no other buildings and nothing but sound of birds right. and the sea a few hundred meters away right. and the absolute prime condo in this entire... I had all I needed all at once. I don't so, anymore. So you, you mentioned before that you're an author and yeah. you're, you're working on a current book. Yeah. How many other books have you wrote? Oh, and I've written uh, three books, um, uh, one of them unpublished, probably good reason for that, actually. Uh, I've written the only uh, equity-produced full-length science fiction play in Canada. I had a good chat with Ray Bradbury once about, about that. It's a very interesting fellow, he won. Uh, but my books are bridge books. They're, you know, okay. so uh, not much. Uh, so is there information that we can provide in our description about those books? or? Um, like, are they online or anything? Oh, they, sure. They oh, sure. Buy them Anywhere. Amazon sure, sure. Or? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, Masterpoint Press in uh, Toronto is the biggest publisher of bridge books in the world. Okay. Uh, Baron Barkley in New York. Uh, Amazon, of course. Yeah. Okay. So look in the description box below uh, for information on, on Dorn's books. Uh, there's other value-saving tips and links in there. He's a full Grab taxis, that type of stuff. Yeah, if, well. I, if I may, uh, uh, Tom, yeah. uh, my books are not how to's. Um, they're for fun and amusement, and they've been taken that way by the reading public. That's right. right? The reviews have been uh, uh, uniformly good on the first one and mixed on the second, uh, which is not a bad thing, actually. So, yeah, you'll like them okay. if you play bridge. Yeah. Of course, if you haven't already, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. There's a bell right next to it for future notifications and additional videos. Hey, check out his food uh, videos, too. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that very much. All right, so we're coming pretty close to the end here. Uh, what's next in your life? No idea. Um, what's next is uh, trying to get this book finished and published as fast as possible Right for a croak. That's fair. That's fair. Well, again, Dorn, I want to thank you Pleasure, for Pat. the interview here on Everybody Has a Story. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Whoa. If anybody else knows anybody that you would think would be an interesting personality to be interviewing Everybody Has a Story, please put it in the comment section below. Other than that, We'll see you down the road for the next video, and I uh, hope everybody's enjoying the life you deserve. All right. Goodbye. Nice talking to you. All right.